Hey everybody, my name is Melanie and I'm the owner of Lost and Found and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. This video is going to be a little bit different than some of my other videos. Honestly, it's a little bit impromptu. Um, I haven't even really gotten ready today and put on my makeup and I've been running around all day. I just got back from um, booth space. Usually I try to be a little bit more together when I make videos, but um, I had a couple minutes and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and we're going to pound this out. This is kind of a by request video for my antique booth owner friends or anybody who is in the vintage reselling space. And what I want to share with you today is the reasons and stories behind why I closed my brick and mortar store. And I'm sharing this because I have been asked now three different times by three different people why I closed my store. And I've had people say, do you have a video? Each of these persons that asked said, do you have a video on why you closed your store? And I was like, no, I don't. And I honestly didn't think that it would be something worth making a video about. Um, but the fact that three people have asked, it's like, well, Mel maybe Melanie, you should make a video <laughs> about it. I'm betting y'all are considering making that step yourself and you're wanting to get as much information as you can, which is exactly what you should be doing. So instead of everybody just wondering and, um, trying to figure out why I thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to answer. So my goal on this channel has always been to be just authentic and honest with you guys i don't have the time and energy to create some fake thing that doesn't really exist so uh, we're going to keep that with this video i'm just going to be honest with you um and share with you why i closed my brick and mortar store okay so super quick background because i know i can ramble and y'all are telling me a lot that i'm rambling i'm sorry i'm going to try and stop but super quick background in case you don't know my business is called lost and found it's 10 years old I started it when I was six months pregnant with my third little boy. I wasn't planning on starting a business. I was just opening a booth space um, at my favorite antique mall. The opportunity came up and I've been on the wait list for a long time. And so yes, even though I was six months pregnant, I jumped and grabbed the spot because I've been waiting for at least over a year. And really, I just have always looked for ways to supplement my family's income. I was committed to staying home with my kids when they were young. And to be honest, I didn't have um, a career that was going to pay enough to make sense for me to put three kids in daycare. Like the numbers just weren't gonna work. So um, I stayed at home and raised our kids. My husband was in full-time ministry. He worked at a church. And um, I thought that this was something I could do to help raise a little bit of extra money. I never planned on it becoming this business that it did. It kind of accidentally happened, um, but I did start out with the plan of like, it wasn't just a hobby. I was looking to make some sort of income. Actually, my very first goal was to get enough money to take our family to Disney World. That's what I really wanted to do. So I ran my business um, in a suburb of Dallas for seven years. I had a booth at that same mall. And then over the course of that seven years, I had two other booths also. After being in business for, I think three years, maybe four, that's when I started selling Fusion Mineral Paint. I already had a blog and I decided, you know what, nobody is selling this online. Maybe I'll see if I can sell this paint through my blog. And so I started an online store, I was one of the first people in the US selling Fusion online and it kind of went bananas and like that just it was right place right time kind of thing and that just took off and so i found myself pretty quickly in a position where running this online store was now the biggest income generator for me and taking the most of my time so that was kind of how i did my business for seven years i had two booth spaces and i shipped paint from my garage every day so fast forward um to 2019 we had a major move, major life change. My husband's job changed. We moved to Northwest Arkansas and I decided that I really, really wanted to try to have my own store. And uh, I could never do that. In North Texas, everything was way too expensive, but I thought possibly up here in Northwest Arkansas, I could find a place that would be affordable. I could move everything out of my garage and I could actually run it from a store, have my own place, teach workshops, and I was blessed to find the perfect building. It really was, it was absolutely perfect. And um, I opened my store, I signed the lease in June of 2019. And by the very end of August, I was open. Now I had that store 
um, until June of 2021. So I had it for two years and then I decided to close. And I now am back to running my business from a booth space and shipping paint from my garage. So I've kind of come full circle. I'm back to doing it the way that I did it for seven years in Texas. So here's the reasons why I made the decision to close that brick and mortar. And really it came down to this. It was the right thing at the wrong time. And a very wise person told me several years ago that the right thing at the wrong time makes it the wrong thing. One of the reasons that it was at the wrong time is because if you're realizing the calendar that I opened it in June of 2019 and I closed it in June of 2021, um, that was basically COVID. So I had my store open, made it through the first holiday season and was literally just starting to really gain momentum. January and February, I had been open about six months and then COVID hit. <laughs> And so um, I didn't have to close my store here in Arkansas. I was not required by law to close it, but I did wind up closing for six weeks because my kids got sent home from school um, and I was homeschooling them. And we didn't know what in the world was going on. I had hired a lady who was working for me and she was in her early seventies and we just weren't, you know, she wasn't really sure what was going on or I wasn't really sure if I felt good about having her there. And she didn't know if she was wanting to be exposed and we we're trying to figure all of that out. So I did close for six weeks. Um, I did reopen, but what that did is it, my momentum just hit a brick wall when COVID hit. By God's grace, like my online store went bananas during COVID. It went bananas. I was like my own little version of Home Depot because everybody and their brother was stuck at home and they were wanting to paint their kitchen cabinets and wanting to paint their bedroom furniture. So I had my highest ever online paint sales during those first few months of COVID. I also sold a lot of home decor just through my Facebook page because again, people were stuck at home and they were bored and they were just buying. So that kept me afloat. But my local store itself, I was getting very, very little foot traffic. So um, my store was rented in an area that's still kind of undergoing being revitalized that doesn't get a ton of foot traffic anyway. There were only three other stores down in the area that were drawing any foot traffic. And when COVID hit, two of those stores closed and they closed for like a year, a long time. So um, the little bit of foot traffic that we were getting, it just took a nosedive. And, um, and then as you can imagine, continuing it, keeping it running it during COVID was just challenging. Like there was, you know, my lady that worked for me got COVID and then she was out for two weeks and then I got exposed and I had to close down the store because I was exposed and that was like Black Friday weekend when it was crazy. And it did, the stress level was just kind of through the roof and that was pretty much the whole time that I was open. So nothing I can do about that, that just happened in the world, but it really did hurt the momentum um, of my store and it, it made, uh, the problem of building that local customer base, which is already hard when you're starting something new, it just made it even harder. All right, so another thing about it that was the wrong time for me is that we're in a place right now with our family where um, the money that I'm generating from my business from Lost and Found, it's not just fun money anymore, it's like a third to a half of our family budget. And I have um, kids like that are gonna be going off to college soon uh, I've got a kid that's going to be needing a car soon, <laughs> like all these really expensive things. We're in this really expensive time of life. And so I'm really, really having to pay attention to what my business is doing. Is my business, is my business generating the kind of revenue that I need for it to make? And here's, here's what I discovered. My brick and mortar store, it was not losing any money, but on average during the time I was open, I was gaining from every, from just from that brick and mortar, I was earning on average $150 a month of profit. That is not a lot. That is not a lot for the work that it takes to run a retail store. I was working 25 to 30 hours a week, um, just, and then just the, the management of it all and running the payroll and just all the things that go along with that. And I was making, it was, my sales were good, but like all of my expenses were so much more. And the, the people that I were paying, it was like eating into my paycheck. Cause I, I couldn't, I couldn't run it by myself. I just couldn't do it with 
having three kids at home. So I had two employees and um, my rent and uh, the, I just was, my sales looked great on paper, but when I put all the numbers together, like I said, it was $150 a month that it was putting in my pocket. And so that's not a wise way to spend my time. Like, that's just not wise. I, I don't have the time right now to be spending that amount of time doing something that's paying me that little. I just don't. I actually closed the store because it wasn't losing money, but it was not making enough money for the amount of time I was putting into it. If I was in a different stage of life, if I didn't have kids about to go off to college, if, um, if I was an empty nester, if this was more fun money and it wasn't currently a third to a half of our family's budget, like then I would have the time to make that small amount of profit while my business grows. Because I knew, I knew that it would get there. I knew that it would get there. I knew that COVID had derailed it. And if I stuck it out, I had a good thing going and I knew that it could work. I just don't have, I didn't have the time. I didn't have the time to wait for that to happen. You may be in a completely different place than I am. You may not have kids at home. You may not need the regular income. You may have some savings that you can float for a while, but that wasn't where I was. That was another thing that made it the wrong time for me. And then the third thing that made it the wrong time was that I learned that the level of administrative skills that it was taking to run a brick and mortar was eating my mental and emotional lunch. Full transparency, I am diagnosed like adult ADD. <laughs> and I don't mean that as just like, oh, I'm super ADD. Like I legitimately have a hard time staying focused. Um, I've learned how to manage it. I've learned what I need to kind of keep my brain together. But um, there's only so much in my tank of mental organization. And in the background, we've got three kids running around with their activities and their school. And then over here, I had this store that I was having to like, just make, you know, when the roof would leak, taking care of that. And, oh, my employee can't come to work. And so I've got to juggle my schedule. So I've now got to go, or I'm going out of town. So I've got to figure out who's going to work for me while I'm out of town. Or I got this letter from the state because I didn't do this thing right with the payroll taxes and I've got to fix that. None of that I had to do in my booth. None of that I ever had to do in my booth. But over here, when you're owning a brick and mortar store, you gotta do that. And so again, I just don't have that much mental energy. Like, and so I was coming home with knots in my back, um, emotionally exhausted, not having the energy to cook dinner um, or to even plan groceries or to help my kids with their schoolwork because it's like the store was was draining that tank again that may not be you like but it's me <laughs> like that's just me so um you know again later in life when maybe empty nest my kids are out i don't have things that i'm much that i'm managing here at home i'll have more mental energy and maybe i can try it again so but those were the three things that made it just a good thing that was working and could work, but for me, it was the wrong time. All right, real quick as we wrap up this video, because my goal is to always be helpful to you guys. I learned so much during those two years. I'm glad, I, like, I don't regret it. I'm so glad that I did it. I learned and I grew as a business owner immensely. So I wanna pass along to you what I've learned, because if you're a booth owner and you're thinking about going from a booth to your own store, and you've never done anything like that before, um, just real quick, I want to share with you four things that I learned that I want you to jot down and consider, okay? Number one is you need to prepare for a major uptick in the administration of your business. So like I was saying before, like there's just a lot that you have to do. When you're leasing a commercial space, when you have employees, um, when you're running payroll for people, there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of maintenance that has nothing to do with buying old stuff or painting furniture. It's paperwork, it's administrative work. If you're currently running your business and um, you don't have it registered as an LLC, you don't even, like you don't have a federal EIN number, you're not even tracking your taxes and paying self-employment tax, like you're not doing any of that stuff, you can't get away with that when you run a store. Like you have to get a city business license. You have to register with your state. You have to get a sales tax number and pay in your sales tax. If you have employees, you have to pay their um, federal and state withholdings every month. You have to have somebody keeping your books. And then you have to manage your lease. You have to manage repairs on your building. You have to keep up the building. Like there's just a lot that goes on. 
So prepare for that. And if you're not really good with that, you're gonna need to get some help, okay? Just know that you're gonna need to get some help and know that if, you, if you're just kinda you know, um, running your business and you have no idea what your numbers are, you don't have your sales tax number, it's just kinda all under the table, you're not gonna be able to do it that way. So just know there's, that's gonna go woo, way up here, okay? Number two, kind of connected, you will need help. You will need help. You may need to pay somebody to keep your books. You may need an accountant or a bookkeeper you probably will need an employee um, or you will need a devoted family member who is ready to be there regularly. You cannot forever run a store by yourself. You just can't. Even if you love it and you love being there, you will get sick. You will want to take a vacation. And I'm telling you, people don't like it when you just put a sign on the door and you go home. Like, you lose customers that way. If you're gonna have a store, your store needs to be open, consistent hours as much as possible, and life's gonna happen and you just can't do it by yourself. I tried for six months to do it by myself, and I couldn't. I wound up hiring a bookkeeper and two part-time employees to work some of the hours for me. And really, if I could have afforded it, I would have hired a store manager to just keep um, inventory counted and barcoded to unpack my orders and I would have just done the creative stuff. It's not like you just do the creative stuff. You've got all of it to do and you will need some help. If you can't pay for help, find some family or some friends that will agree to be your dedicated help for a season of time because you're going to need it. Okay, number three, momentum, y'all. It takes time and it takes money to build. Even if you're established in your area, when you move and you open your own store, it's gonna take a little while. You're gonna get a little bit of a bump as the newbie in town, but it's gonna take some time. And you're gonna need to plan on spending some money on some ad revenue. I'm not saying Facebook ads necessarily need to be what you do, but I had to spend money to get my name out there. And I also just had to wait. It just took time for people to figure out who I was and what the things were that I'm doing. And my first workshop, nobody signed up for. It took two or three workshops until I could get a couple people in the seat. It just takes time and momentum. And so save some money on the front end, right? Like be sticking some money back now to help yourself while you get through what's going to be a little bit of a slim time while you're building the momentum of your shop. All right, and thing number four, you guys, you have to know your numbers. If you're not keeping track, of your business numbers right now, you will not survive as a brick and mortar if you don't start doing that. Like I said, when I looked at all my numbers and realized I was making a profit of 150 bucks a month, that was when I knew something had to change. So to get to that number, I had to know my average cost of goods. Of all the different varieties of things I was selling in my store, what was my average profit margin on those things? What was my profit margin on my paint? What was my profit margin at, on average in my furniture, on my gifts, on my decor, because those are all different numbers. And then I had to know what were my average monthly expenses, my rent, my insurance, my internet, my payroll for my employees. And then knowing those numbers, that could help me figure out a sales number. If I need to cover like the cost of my goods and these expenses, just to break even, I've got to sell this much. So if I want to put a thousand dollars in my pocket, Here's the number that I need to get to, all right? That's what you're gonna have to do to manage your brick and mortar. So if you're at the point like where you're not doing that, where you're not tracking your inventory, you're just buying whatever and you're not writing it down, you're not paying attention to your profit margin, you're gonna have to start to do that. So do it now while you have a booth and it's more manageable. All right, so that's it. Sorry, y'all, I wanted to keep this video under 20 minutes. Looks like we're close, um, but there's the answer. That's why I closed my brick and mortar. It was the right thing at the wrong time for me. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be that way for you because your needs and who you are and your skill set is totally different. Could be totally different than mine. If you're going to consider taking the leap, I hope that the four things that I shared gave you um, a little bit of groundwork to build on and some things to think about. If you've got more questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help as much as I can, okay? Please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber already. And if you found this video helpful, you can give us a thumbs up. 
You can also click that little heart button and offer a tip to our channel that helps support my channel and I appreciate either, any, and all of that so much. Okay, see you guys again soon.